Okay, so let's let's apply the continuity equations uh, uh, for psi and psi prime at x equals zero and x equals l, so that we can um, uh, sort of get uh, solutions for so we can find how uh, b, c, d, and f are related to a, and that allows us to find the reflection and transmission coefficients. Okay, so at the at the interface between um, region 1 and region 2, so this region right here, right at that point at x equals L, at x equals 0, okay, then we have um, uh, the left hand side of, of that, uh, in re uh, the left hand solution, so the solution in region 1 at x equals 0 is a e to the i k 1 times 0 plus b e to the minus i k 1 times 0, uh, e, to the I, e, to the, e to the 0 is just 1 and so this will be a plus b and then on the right hand side we have similar we have something similar except for now that we're going to get c plus d so we have uh, one uh, one continuity equation results in a plus b equals c plus d now if we take the the derivative of the of the um, wave functions if we take the derivative of these wave functions here okay uh, both in region one and region two at x equals zero um, that also has to be um, continuous and so that goes that basically um, uh, amounts to i k1 times a minus i k1 times b now I've, I've just left off the e to the i k1 times 0 because that's because um, that's 1 okay so that's um, the derivative of the uh, wave function in region 1 the derivative of the wave function in region 2 is i k2 c minus i k2 d and so we get the second uh, continuity relation k1 times the quantity a minus b is equal to k2 times the quantity c minus d. Um, at the at the other uh, back up at x equals l, so at this place here, the the, uh, the uh, boundary between region two and three. Okay, then we have um, this equation for the wave functions. The wave function in region two, c e to the i k2 now, not k1, k2 l. Um, plus d e to the i minus i k2 l is equal to f e to the i k1 l okay k1 because again you're going back down to the um, uh, to the potential energy equals zero there's nothing more that we can, we can't simplify this anymore at the moment and then uh, uh, the, the derivative um, uh, continuity the, the continuity of the derivative in this at, uh, in the, at the boundary between region two and three gives you this and that's basically uh, uh, simplifies to k2 times the quantity c e to the i k2 l minus d e to the minus i k2 l and that's got to equal uh, k1 times um, the uh, f times e to the i k1 l okay so those are our four continuity relationships in principle those can be solved for um, uh, well we can we can relate uh, b c d and f to to a again a you you it's kind of a scaling factor that you set by the conditions of the problem and so um, but you know it, it, it's obviously not uh, uh, super uh, easy to see how that's done um, but what we know is that what we really what we really need is that what we're really after is the is the reflection coefficient which is equal to uh, b squared over a squared the amplitude um, complex amplitude squared uh, of b and uh, the ratio of the complex amplitude of the ratio of b squared over a squared and then um, the transmission um, so the reflection is basically happens at the at x equals zero the transmission actually means that you that the uh, you're asking how much of the initial how what's the probability that the initial the, uh, the the initial beam or particles in the initial beam are transmitted to all the way on the other side of the potent of this of the barrier so greater than uh, x greater than l and there we have again we just have to take the ratio of f squared divided by a squared so what we really need is to relate b squared is b squared and a squared and f uh, and f squared to a squared and we don't need we we can basically uh, eliminate c and d so if we do that um, uh, if you use these four underlying equations, you can eliminate C and D. I'm not going to go through the math, but what you can show is that the reflection coefficient uh, is this expression, and the transmission coefficient is this expression.